Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Adventures Travel Club television show. As you can see by the scenes that you're looking at right here, you know that we have to be in the Greek Isles, right, What Betty? a big whale that was. <laughs> <laughs> big humpback. I'm waiting now for it to spout. Yeah, yeah. But did you notice the You don't the want shape? to see that, then it would probably be a volcano. Yeah, huh? did you kind of notice the shape of it? Yeah. Though? I'm sorry. That well, you know, there are so, so frivolous. There are something. so many islands there. I mean, I was surprised. I know you've been there before, and I haven't been, but uh, I, I mean, every time... You looked around from right to left, uh, front to back. There were islands, 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 beautiful islands. And this was a great little ship that we were on to. And it was carrying us now to the island of Patmos, which was the last island that we were going to visit on our tour of the Greek Isles. And, uh, you know, Betty, this island, of course, as a lot of people know, and a lot of people probably do not know, is very famous because of St. John the Evangelist. Yeah, I wonder what it, how, if it would have been worth anything if it hadn't been for St. John. It's, I mean, writing the book of Revelation there was, is really what brings tourists, isn't it? Yes, One I, of the I, main reasons, I believe I that suggest. is, right. And, of course, there is a big monastery, uh, which we're going to visit just very briefly uh, on videotape anyway. We spent a little bit more time there when we were there. But there were, there were a lot of, uh, of people that were there that day, and uh, there's a lot of stair climbing to do. And uh, so we'll tell you about that as we go on, because that monastery is very important. It's a monastery of the evangelist and apostle John the Theologian. That is the correct name. Oh, okay. Thank you. You got that? Uh, yeah. Keep... Okay. Oh, by the way, yes. one time on one of our shows, we did talk about St. Paul at great length. Right. And in the course of this show, you asked me, did St. Paul ever have any miracles? Mm -hmm. And I said, I really don't know, but I did find out. In fact, somebody called me and told me, because really? we said, if anybody knows, tell me. But I found out, and it there was, and it was a really funny thing because it was like three days after we did the show that it was in the Daily Missile. And the reason we don't know it is because it's the feast of St. Isidore, so we never read that So epistle. you don't read that day's So we, we always <laughs> skip that. But yes, he did. He did? He did? Yes, what did he, he did. do? A lame person. He, he, he cured, cured a lame, lame person. person. Oh, yes, that's he did. wonderful. So yeah. yes, for all of you viewers that watched that one show and I said I didn't know, now you know. If you're listening, if you're watching again. Okay, now we'll go oh, back to where great. we are. Well, where, where we are is uh, we're, we're approaching the little harbor here in the little uh, town of Hora. And, of course, uh, we can see all the little white buildings over here. And this is, of course, what I really pictured the Greek Isles to be like, you know. Except some of these buildings were a little more modern That's than I thought That's very modern to me, were. but yeah. most everything over there is whitewashed. You, yeah. you notice it particularly in Mykonos, but... I, I presume uh, it, it's a, there's, there's a reason for it. The sun is reflected Reflects off of back, it, you sure. know, yeah. and uh, for cooling purposes. And then building them out of rock or adobe types, I guess that's what it is, isn't it? Cement and stuff that they build I think them. It's, I, Not I adobe because there I, wouldn't be enough No, dirt but, there, but there. there's plenty of rocks, as yeah. we just saw as we were coming onto the island there. So there's a lot of... Uh, of rocks building material yeah. which of course is used in this part of the world as well and it dresses it up by painting it you know oh yeah and then they you know it everything every all the scenery blends together there and i think it's wonderful well I we're up now uh, we have gone up on top of the hill and so we're just uh, right almost at the door of the monastery i wanted to say that you know this was started the building of the monastery by reverend chris Dol uh, let Come me see on. if I've got that. Christodolos in 1088. That sounded very good. Did I sound good? You know, I'm going to give you an A. Okay, on that. thank you. Now do it My again. Greek is what, getting what better. What is it, please? C H R I S T O D O U L O S. I don't pronounce it again. Christodolos. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm anyway, proud of you. That was the guy, and he was a reverend, and uh, he may have been a monk. I'm not quite sure. But you know, on the outside of the castle. Excuse I'll, me, he could be both. What? A reverend monk. A reverend be? monk? <laughs> well, maybe he was. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. All right. Thank anyway, you. the outside looks like a fortification. Looks like a, it looks like a castle. But on the and and it probably yeah. was very much you know fortified. But this is the inside as we're as we're taking a look right here. There are a lot of mosaics and a lot of paintings uh, here. And this was kind of the main courtyard. And you know, Betty, the the cells of the monks were built around uh, the main little chapel that it was there and and um, which we had a chance to go into and of course you know you can't take pictures everywhere anymore unfortunately but this beautiful oh, mosaic was that. on the outside isn't yeah, it beautiful isn't it lovely I mean you know these are I, I guess you would say that these were icons as well I wonder how mosaics. it stayed so that must not have been one of the old icons that may have been I added. think that because yeah. uh, the mosaic, the mosaic. would have had to if it was outside would have had to have some kind of 
damage well, done to it, I would think. You know, the uh, the monastery, you know, has been there for, for so long. And, of course, they've added on to it. And they've put other things there, too. So I suspect that that mosaic that you saw uh, was probably, you uh, know, later later yeah. uh, than, than 1088. But I will say, though, that this the architecture, as we see, and as we get inside the kitchen, can you believe this? Now, this is this is the kitchen of the monastery, and of course you can see the inside. Uh, they've had a lot of fires that cooked a lot of things, I suspect, in this kitchen. But one of the things that I was amazed to see, Betty, they must have had a lot of monks up there because they ate a lot of bread. I mean, they have a trough we're going to see here in a couple of seconds where they used to knead the bread. And this thing is as big as about two bathing tubs or bathtubs, I would say. And that's because, Look how big this that's thing is. That's because they needed them if they ate a lot. They <laughs> Isn't that right? Oh, you got me on that one. That's that true. Right? But they I'm did. sure they did eat they... a lot of bread. Bread is a great filler. Well, and, and I, I suspect that that was uh, probably the main thing that, that they probably had. What was it bread and water, bread, bread and, and water, milk, or what, milk, whatever, yeah. you know? Because they live very austerely, from what I understand. Now, see, these need to be reconditioned. Uh, well, some of these were inside and some of these yeah. were outside. As we walked along some of the hallways, we saw some of these beautiful... Uh, paintings that were here and of course they're all telling biblical stories you know as you can see I think I'm not sure but that one the man on the water right there I kind of uh -huh. think that's Saint Peter that you know walking on the water yeah, and, and being then, frightened and, mm -hmm. uh -huh, and uh -huh. it, it, it didn't have quite enough faith I think at that particular stage of the game how fortunate we are Marv to be able to partake of history like this and then and it's thrilling to be able to bring it to our viewers and for those people that We'll never be able to travel except doing it vicariously with us, and we certainly welcome them. Yes, in fact, you know, Betty and I are, are stopped a lot of times by people who say that uh, how much they do enjoy the show and uh, that they have traveled all over the world with us, you know, sitting right there in front of the television set. And we appreciate that, too, and uh, we hope that we are being able to bring you some things that maybe if you haven't seen before or if you have seen them before and you visited there before it kind of lets you relive Refreshes it again you. what was right. that one picture it looked like a monkey or a that something? was a, i think that was a lion a lion yeah oh, okay. and now don't ask me the significance of it because a, that i like really lion, don't know but, okay. you know you'd have to spend a lot of time here to really study yeah. Uh, even though I did buy a couple of books on that. But, I mean, you would have to study this yeah, there because there's so much there. And and, uh, and this was just one of many monasteries, of course, that we saw. And, of course, those have to be some sort of demons. Somebody's you know? having a bad dream. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. You think Let you know what that is? Let me tell you who that is. Uh, You're not quite sure. No, no. Okay, well, no. I'm not sure I at had all, a so. moment. Uh, <laughs> a, a you had a moment. I had that a senior a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, anyway, uh, the foundation of the monastery was actually laid in 1091. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of pirates in this area, too. Did you realize that? Well, like, any time that you have um, uh, islands that you, you know, that are not too far apart, they're logically going to be, uh, the ships will be uh, taken as, as a bounty or taking, taking. Oh, a lot of stuff taken from the ships, right? That's right. Yeah, that's okay. Right, All right. Well, right. anyway, it did happen. In fact, they, they even left the island and went to one of the other islands when it became a little bit dangerous because of some of the raids that they had. So uh, it was, you know, it was kind of interesting. But anyway, he did have, uh, uh, in the year 1100, there were 100 bunks there, and that's the well. Okay, that's, that's the well. It's got a top. Did on they it. keep them well? Kept them very they, well. That's of course when you say well, they had a water supply, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be careful because that is salt water out there. Down below. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So their su well, their water supply, I guess, it rained a lot though. So they it must have been. Uh, well, you know, I I don't know if it did rain a lot it? there. No, I think that's kind of a dry area. But I think the rainwater that they did catch, they probably kept. Now we're going to walk down the hill and we're going to go to. The grotto where St. John uh, received the messages by voice or whatever and wrote the book of Revelation. We did not shoot inside of the little chapel. It was Sunday and their liturgy was going on and there were a lot of tourists there at the same time. In fact, I have to, I've got to tell you, Betty, I was a little disappointed. Now here we can see one of the mosaics there in this. This is a little cluster of buildings that's down the hill right at the cave where uh, the sacred cave where uh, St. John uh, received the inspiration to write 
the book of Revelation, because they were having their liturgy, and the time that we entered the little chapel, the townspeople were right there, uh, and they were partaking of the liturgy, and it was just at you the point of consecration, rude, huh? yeah. and they the tour guides marched the people between the priest and the and the the communicants there, and I thought I. At that point, I just stopped and said, no, this is wrong. I'm, I can't go any further on this. I so this went. is being sacrilegious. I, I mean, went. I I'm believe. sacrilegious, The I little guess. bar that you see there, uh, and this is another little chapel that I just uh -huh. poked my head in the window there. The little bar that you saw right there, that is uh, in lieu of a bell, and that is hit uh, by a hammer of some sort, and it rings, and that's what calls the monks to their particular uh, yeah. hours of the office, uh, or office of the hours, I should say, or, or whatever they had to do at that particular you time. Remember when we were in Meteoria, Meteora, and they, they, they showed us how they did it with a piece of wood to call yes, them. Yes, right, hit, right. Yeah. But yeah. now I went down into the chapel, and I'd like to say just a little something about it. I, I, I didn't feel quite like you did about it. I wanted to see what I could see. And it was pointed out to us where St. John's bed was. Mm -hmm. and his pillow was a rock, mm -hmm. and, and, and it looked like he had to be a very small man because it was not a large enclosure. It was just like a, a niche cut into the wall itself, and that was where he slept. And I, to me, I touched it. I thought, to me, was something I was happy that I was able to well, do. Well, I, I think it would have been nice, had, but I think the timing was just a little yeah. little insensitive. Now, there you can see uh, up, on the, uh, up on the hill the... Uh, the I want to say the fortress, that's the monastery up there. And then the, not quite even halfway down the hill is just where Betty was talking about, uh, the cave and the little buildings there where St. John was. I don't recall it being that murky. What? I, I noticed a haze of, of, of when you, when the Pollution. Long, is that pollution there? Yeah. Near, in the water? Right near the water and everything? Could have been, I don't know. I, but I'm did you not see? Oh, oh. Yeah, no, I saw Didn't it. Didn't you see it? Oh. It's probably just atmospheric conditions. Yeah, I'm not okay. quite sure. Anyway, uh, we're going to leave Patmos now, and we're going to go to another country. Actually, we're going to go uh, for a little bit, and we're going to wind up in... Now, you say the name. How do you pronounce it right? You always said Kasaduski. Kasaduski. Yes. See, I'm not even saying it right. Kusadasi. But when we got to Turkey, the, but, Kusa, she, but that's not the way that's she not the pronounced way they, it. No, the, our guide in Turkey said it, he pronounced it a different way, right? Well, let me think about it. I don't ask okay. me right now. I'll think about it and let you know in a little while. <laughs> anyway, we're going to Turkey, right? Yeah. Yeah, and because the place where we're going to visit in Turkey is a place called Ephesus, and we'll tell you more about that a little Wait bit a later. Look at here. It was so windy. It was so windy. Look at us getting blown, uh, really getting blown here, and there was no place to eat. Right. So we sat on the, on our, we're just sitting down on the, on, on the, the edge, on of, the the edge pool. of the swimming pool. Right. Not very comfortable, but at least it was a place to sit. Right. The food was good. Food was excellent. Yeah. It really was good. was good. Oh, good. all throughout Greece, the food was wonderful. Yeah. It was really great. It was it magnificent. Did you, did did you gain weight on this on that trip? I sure did. Did you? And I haven't taken it off yet. I don't think you did. You didn't eat no, that much. No, I did. I, oh, are you kidding? Listen, I love the Greek food. I thought it was out of this world. I can't wait to go back. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but well, I'm going to have to lose a few pounds before I do that. Anyway, we're on the outside now of Kasadus. How do you say it? Kashadushki? Now you got is that, anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, that, it's that town that's out it's, there, you know, <laughs> on the yeah, edge well, of we the We always say Kusadasi. Yeah. But, but I'll, I'll they buy do that. the shh sound to it. And I don't something. think we know how to do that, do no, we? No, obviously. <laughs> uh, don't have to ask that question. No, that's true. I just took a picture here of a little bit of the of the city itself, and uh, there's much more to it than, than what you're going to see right here. And Betty thought too that since the last time she had been there, it had grown considerably. And I I kind of think too that the guide explained to us once that what happens during the summertime. This is a great area for the Greeks and also the Turks to uh, to come and have uh, their summer holidays here. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a beautiful coastal town and the water, I have to say, both in Greece and on the shores here uh, around Turkey are some of the most magnificent, clear water that you have ever seen, that I've ever seen anyway. Yeah. I don't believe that they have much pollution in their waters here, evidently. Oh, I don't think so in the water. No, 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 no. probably not. These guys were out there yeah, fishing, fun, as you huh? can see. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were really I having a good know, time. I don't know, but look at that. That's pretty rocky. I'd been sick. That's the nice thing about a big ship, you know. You don't You're have to worry so about that. K-U-S-A-D-A-S-I. 
whoever knows how to pronounce it, good for you. <laughs> well, that's what it is, really, I think. That, that's what it looks like, right, yeah. how you'd pronounce it in, in English. I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah. it is a little bit of a drive uh, from... Kusadowski, Kusadowski, wherever, to... <laughs> the K-word. The K-word, right, to uh, Ephesus. And uh, so we uh, got on our bus, and we had a very good uh, young man as a guide that explained a lot of things to us as we were going on the road here. And this is just the outskirts, as you can see. Now, we're going to visit what was the third city of Ephesus. There were, there were, Ephesus was built, from what I understand, three different times. And so we're going to take a little walk right now and we're going to listen to our guide in just a minute. The city of Ephesus, which is a typical Greco-Roman city. Archaeologists divide this city into three districts. As the residential district, which is actually the area which has not been excavated yet, once you take a look at the sloping of these two hills on both sides of the city, up to a certain level you can see a certain uh, line which is caused by the uh, houses of the city. Mm. So if we can sort of visualize that the city has been surrounded by the houses of the citizens on both slope of the hills, stretching to the eastern end, northeastern end. So this area was the residential area of the city, which has not been excavated yet. The part which has been excavated so far is the two important sections of the city, the administrative district which is exactly where we are now, where the state buildings were built for the use of governors to govern the city. And further down on the western end, there is the, uh, the social or the civil district of Ephesus. In this political center of the city, there were certain important st uh, state buildings built for the use of governors, as I mentioned. One of the most and the largest one, which was called the state Agora, you know what Agora means in ancient Greek? Yes. The forum, meeting place, marketplace. That took a place right in this big ground, which was actually surrounded by two rows of columns on from foresight. The central part was left open for the public gathering. And the state Agora was actually the upper Agora, commercial center. But the main function of this building was to serve as the parliament house too. The state was ruled by proconsul. They had to be selected by people's council from Iglesia. There were, uh, there were councillors, magistrates, members of advisory council, legislators, and some other state, uh, state members. So in certain time of the year, all these governors would gather in the state, built, state agora, where they would be discussing all different affairs of the city. So this would be open to public visits. Anyone who is interested in the affairs of the city willing to find out where the city is leading through politically, economically, culturally, they would be allowed into the meeting of governors. In the meantime, they would be given a chance to bring their personal problems to where they would allow the governors to know what the problem of that in particular citizen is so that they could discuss to find a solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. So by this function, we get to understand the building must have served as an open courthouse too. And Betty, as you can see right here, those pipes that we see right down mm -hmm. here, there was running water, both cold and hot water, to every building in uh, the city of Ephesus. I mean, this to me was absolutely amazing now, how they did it, that. Was it because they had thermal? The they had uh, the water came from up on the up on the hill, yeah. and then they also had slaves that were burning oh. wood up there and burning and making hot water oh, that's as well. Hot water. Yeah, okay. and then it just sort of ran down, you know, because yeah. of the uh, of the slope uh, off of off of the hill. But y you and I have been here before, and uh, every time we go, it just amazes me to see. And now they've been doing a lot more reconstruction and at the very end of the show we'll just see one of the buildings that we ha can't get into now but where they have done a lot of uh, excavation and hopefully one of these days soon that will be open to uh, to the general public but this is a this is a magnificent place to visit and uh, anybody that does go to Greece if you can get over to Ephesus in Turkey uh, this should be on your itinerary oh, don't you think fun. so Betty? and I you know what I think is fun about it I think of St. Paul's letters to the Ephesians, to the Ephesians uh -huh. yeah, and then you think like the Corinthians when we were there. And Corinth, uh, right, yeah. and Philippi. Uh, yeah, and so you sort of uh, uh, relive the Gospels because you can kind of picture, even though a lot of it just rocks, You, but you know that that's the area. That this is the place where was. it actually yeah, happened, yeah. that's right. And I and I think one of the, one of the, when we went to Thessalonica, and they don't pronounce it Thessalonica, it's Thessalonica. And I thought, well, some Sunday when I'm reading the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, <laughs> and then when they, everybody's saying, oh my God, what's the matter with that woman, you know? 
<laughs> but that is the way it's pronounced there. Right. That's the and that's Manika. probably why we still can't pronounce Kusadaski correctly. <laughs> uh, I, it was, I think there are many different variations because uh, the, the local people do it one way, historians probably do And the tourists do it another way. Yeah. Yeah. This one here that I have under my hand has a certain pattern card in it, which is actually the pattern relating to medicine. This is the very first original version of symbol of pharmacy. Mm. And on the other side, there is the very first or original version of the symbol of medicine, uh, medicine, which is the caduceus that you see. These two signs were used as a road sign for a building which believed to be serving as a foundation house or a hospital. So that's a building on the corner here, which was actually the hospital of the city, where there were two famous doctors. One of them was Dr. Alexandros, who was trying to find a cure for malaria. So we'll get the sea statue erected along the side of a very famous street, one of the first pedestrianized streets in Ephesus. There are believed to be eight of these friezes, which were used as a decorative element to place to be placed on the second floor of a gate called Gate of Hercules that will be passing soon. This is fortunately the single remaining of those original eight friezes. The frieze actually is a goddess of victory and peace. She's always been described with the wings because she would need to deliver, fly from city to city in order to deliver victory and peace. And her name is Nike, Nike, or Athena Nike, the, the goddess of victory and peace. You see the wreath that she's holding in both hands, those were the symbols of victory and peace. I will be proceeding further ahead for you to make sure that you So there you see Athena Nike, huh? That that I, I didn't notice that one before I when we had been either. there. I didn't know either, and you know we we learned something about that after the fact because of the statue itself, how it's so famous. Isn't that the one that's in Paris? Are you thinking of the? Oh no, the, am I thinking of the I other? I think Nike. you're thinking of the other. Oh, the, the light, wing victory. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. Okay. But you know, was that Athena too? You know, no, I don't remember whether that was or it, it probably it may have been. Well, if it was Nike, it sounds like it should have, have to been be the, the same, same person, yeah. right? But but and, and the amazing thing about it was that her gown looked like it was flowing with, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what was so spectacular about it. Now we're looking down at the what is known as the library oh, as yeah. we look down this long street here. Uh, what, I guess you call that the main drag or one of the main drags of, of Ephesus, and you can imagine how this must have been with all the statuary on either side of this great, great street, as you can see here. And this, uh, it, this was amazing. I mean, they had to have such a wonderful feeling of art, oh, yeah. as well as, as the beautiful architecture, of course. Yeah, and of course, the, the the statues had heads on them and stuff. Yes, they, most so of them did. Most of them did. And as you as you walk down, you can see the ruts in the road, uh, and, and it's it's stone, but it's for the chariots came down, and you right. can actually see the ruts from the from the wheels of the chariot. This is oh, this is just great. And every time you go, there's more done. That, yes, so. they have been. In fact, uh, the first time that I was there, we saw these great big building cranes that were there, and they've done. They finished a lot of that work now in uh, off to what would be our left hand side over here. And uh, again, as I say, those buildings are not uh, yet open, but hopefully that they will be. They're open to the archaeologists, but to the general, you know, tourists, they're not open yet. But one of these days. They will be, and I'm sure that the finds that they have there and the things that we're going to see are really, really quite exquisite. And uh, I haven't even seen it in the National Geographic. To build in their houses so that they have the facilities of constantly running hot and cold water supplies in the sit in their in their homes. Hot water. Hot water. They could actually they build a fireplace on the sloping on the hilltop. But the slaves would be burning timber when it us constantly. Through the gravity, they would let the water through pumps into the, higher, uh, into the fireplace. That's how they would warm up the water and then let it run through the sloping into the certain pumps. Why? Those terracotta or lead pipes. And they also built, they also built central heating vessels in their homes by allowing those pipes to run through the walls or the ground of the rooms. They could actually heat up their homes too. Built as an imperial temple dedicated to Roman Emperor Hadrian. The Temple of Hadrian is one of the finest one along the street of Kuritz. 
What you see on the facade is a beautiful, intricately decorated facade, which actually has 30% of the original remains from 2nd century AD. This is a reconstruction. As you see, it is a double arch structure. The outer arch, which is supported by four Corinthian columns, bears a beautiful female figure right in the center where the keystone is. She was called she was called Thys or Thike by the Greeks. She was the protector goddess of the cities. And behind that arch, just above the gate, there is a second arch, which you'll get to see it very soon, that also has a female figure in. Relating to her hairdress, Arcodius thought that she was called Medusa. But if she is Medusa, if she is Medusa, ladies and gentlemen, this must be the only building in the whole ancient world that you see Medusa being described with the rest of her body. Since there she has been described like a beautiful blossom coming out of a plant, there is the second hypothesis of her identity saying that she was called Flora, goddess of flowers and vegetation. And below that arch there is a beautiful chain of trees, which actually is a replica, the original one is kept in the local museum here. That priest talks about the foundation of the city, gods and goddesses of the city, rulers of the city, and certain, uh, certain celebrations of the city. So that's a replica one. And down below there is another pattern, which is a pattern of meander, representing river meandros, which is symbolizing fertility of ancient rivers. And Betty, we're going to have to be leaving here pretty quick, but before we do, we have to visit the public John, as oh, you can see right amazing, here. isn't that amazing, huh? Yeah. That and, long ago that they had public toilets like that, isn't that unique? Well, it was a place where people came and visit and carried on their business, you know, yeah. uh, various businesses, I yeah, guess I, I should say. Yeah, I think so. I think that um, it, 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 it is very practical. Sure. On the walls and great marble covering below this wooden platform on the co covering the floor. The seats built out of marble, like these original remains that you see, that there were 44 seats running along the walls in a U shape. The central part served as a fountain. <laughs> there was a fountain right in the middle of all this, and it was really something. And I imagine that this was quite beautiful, as oh, he yes. as he says, you know. And we can see where some of the runways are there, or carry off some of the stuff. Betty, you know, that's just about all the time that we have. But if people are interested in the trips that we have coming up, all they have to do is give you a call at... 4887443. So if you are interested in any of our trips, please give Betty a call at that number. And uh, it's time for us to say goodbye. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>